Morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Good morning. Good morning. I just got a short video. Good right now. Inspired at this time. All is well. Everything that is happening around me is being taken care of by the spirit and the source of love within me. All is well. I'm open to creative solutions. I release my limiting beliefs. I tune in to a source of love within. I tune in to a source of love within me. I welcome the presence of angels and guides. I welcome the light of the world to enter in. All is well. I am guided. I am protected. I am loved. I am safe. It's okay to feel good right now. I give myself permission to feel good right now. I welcome a good feeling vibration right now. In this moment, I can suspend my fears and my disbelief and my uncertainty, and I can choose to feel good right now. In this moment, I can turn over my fears. I can turn over my projections. I can turn over all my judgment and attack thoughts, and I can choose to feel good right now, welcoming the guidance of the highest truth and compassion to enter into my space now, to give me inner direction, inner guidance, inner wisdom and joy, inspiration, ideas, offering me support at this time, a feeling of safety, a sense of serenity, a sense of knowing that all is well. All is well. All is well. I send love from my heart out to the world. I know that the power of the love within me has the power to serve people far beyond my physical sight, far beyond my local experience, far beyond my consciousness. I can see beyond all limitation now. I can see the power of my energy moving through me as I extend love and light to the world. My positive intentions have the power to heal. My positive intentions have the power to heal. My positive intentions have the power to heal. My positive thoughts heal my body. My positive thoughts bring light to my family, to my loved ones, to my friends, to my social network online. My positive thoughts bring joy to the world. I have the power to bring more joy to the world. I have the power to be part of the solution. I have the power to show up with grace and serenity and give relief just through my presence, through my thoughts, through my actions and my prayers. I am a miracle worker. I am a miracle worker. I am a miracle worker. All is well. All is well. I am a miracle worker. My positive energy brings light to the world. My positive thoughts bring light to the world. I can smile. I can breathe. I can breathe easy and I can smile and I can trust and I can know that all is well. That when I'm in tune with positive love and energy and thoughts of love and love and love, that all is well. When I welcome that light, that love into my heart, all is well. When I bring forth an attitude of grace, ease, gratitude, and joy, all is well. When I tune into positive thoughts, positive content, positive stories, when I allow myself to dream of what is possible, all is well. I trust in the power of my inner wisdom now. 
All is well. All is well. May I send my prayers to the world. May I trust that my prayers are being heard. May I trust the power of my intentions. May I trust the power of my positive thoughts. And may I trust the power of my stillness. All is well. May I feel the interconnectedness and oneness all throughout the world, knowing that we are all together as one, one union, a union of beings, serving and supporting and healing each other, sending thoughts of love to the world, sending energy of love to the world, sending prayers and stillness to the world, sending light to the world. All is well. All is well. All is well. is well. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. So this week at the 5am club we'll all be around uh, The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. And hi, I'm Yinka. I run Hear My Voice Book Club, which is an inspirational self-development books. And all the events can be found on Meetup. And this week we have the 5 a.m. club. Tonight we have the transformational stories. Thursday, month of the book club. Um, it's 5 p.m. No, 5 a.m., 12 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. on Thursday. Different, there will be three different sessions. Insanity on Saturday. We've got Jodie Spencer's meditation at 8.15 of a mystical experience. Uh, 4 p.m. is children's meditation. Sunday we have Qigong and 8 a.m. we have office and journaling session. And oh that's already been there's no more spaces for that. So, uh, so that's the Thursday session, Sunday's children's session. Michael joining us next Thursday at 8 30. And the 20th or oh, breaking the habit of being yourself. That's our groups, keeping people connected. And then we're going to go into Qigong and clearing other people's energy. If you will, will and enable to stand up. And then go like this, drop. How do we clear energy we might have picked up from other people. You know, in Qigong, they call this acquired Qi. And often what we're picking up is other people's stress, other people's anxieties, uh, nervous tension, just energy that doesn't really resonate with our highest expression of who we are, or even the energy that we want to be in within ourselves. It's very easy to absorb other people's energy if our energy isn't strong in the first place. So here's a little routine to help you cleanse and clear other people's energy, even if it's just been like at work or you looked at your phone and saw some something negative either from somebody else or the news or you had a confrontation, a strong conversation with somebody that you just want to let go of. Are you ready? All right, we're going to stand with the feet about shoulder width apart and you're going to just take your hands up over your head, make a light loose fist, come up onto your toes and then go like this, drop into your heels and cleanse. You know, the earth energy is always underneath us. We can clear it down to the earth, almost like a recycling. Think of yourself as an energetic gardener. You're going to recycle old energy and turn it into new energy. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Up onto the toes and we're just going to do this over and over again, knocking the heels into the ground, creating a little vibration through your bones. Inhale through the nose, exhale with a long sigh out through the mouth. Knock those heels into the ground. And just in your mind, imagine this energy releasing and letting go. You can even kind of tune in to the energy you want to let go of. 
hold it in your mind, and then just imagine a recycling, a letting go down to the earth. Let's do it three more times. All right. Are we clear? There's another exercise. It's called venting. Venting out the energy. And what you're going to do is just stand with your hands like this. And we're going to take a big deep breath into our chest. So we're going to go. And then you're going to make that same sound. as a, And imagine old energy going out through your arms to your hands. Now this one is good because you could do it very subtly even if there's other people around. You could just have the hands out like this and do it subvocally and just be like, I'm not taking on that energy. It might come through me and down to the earth, but it's not going to stick inside of me. So the, the full expression, hands out to the sides, Big deep breath, see it's all the way into the chest, and then a slow. Exhale all the way out, and an inhale. Big deep breath. venting down to the earth. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel the earth underneath you. It's always there to support you. Do that one more time. Big deep breath. Good. Now, an exercise for protection. What we're going to do is cross the wrist like this. These points on the inside of the wrist are called the heart protector. Heart protector. So it's going to be like your emotional immune system. And we're going to go like this. We're going to inhale, wrist cross. When you exhale, you're going to shift your weight over to the right side and just press down to the earth. Come back to the center, wrist cross, inhale, and now shift the weight over to your left side. Bend both knees and sink down and send the energy to the earth. Inhale, this is for protection. Exhale, that's for cleansing and clearing. We just do a nice flow. Inhale. Right across the chest, right across your heart center. And then down to the earth. And inhale. And this time I'm going to breathe in and out through the nose, nice and slow, with a little weight shift, left and right. Inhale, we come up. Exhale, we go down. Nice and slow. These flows are done slowly with relaxation, like your body's moving in water. So the arms float up and the arms float down. We go slow as a way to move and cultivate energy. We go slow as a way to calm our minds and balance our nervous system. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, float the arms down. Nice deep breath. Exhale down to one side. Nice deep breath. Exhale down to the other side. Calm, clear energy circulating through you. As the body relaxes into this slow movement, notice how your mind relaxes. Qigong is a moving meditation. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. Inhale, exhale. Now, come up and just hold your hands in this position. And I want you to imagine that there's this 
field of energy around your body, this golden light in front of you, to the sides, above, behind, and below. This golden shield around your body. Wrist or cross. You bend your knees, relax down into the earth, and close your eyes and just breathe slowly and deeply and imagine this field of protective light surrounding your body so that as you move through life, even if there's stress, negativity around you, it doesn't enter into your personal energy field. This golden shield is a shield of protection. Breathe slow and deep. In front, behind, left and right, even above and below the head. And slowly bring the arms, hands down, feet together, and just notice how your body feels as you bring your hands to your sides. Feel that nice, light, buzzing, tingling energy. That means your energy is clear and clean and resonating at your highest frequency. Do you get a sense of that? Take one more deep breath. All right, everybody, beautiful little practice. Stay in the flow. Hopefully your chi is feeling cleared and ready for the session. Um, so we'll just do a quick round page of appreciation. I'm going to pause this. So you will need pens and paper. We're going to do a bit from chapter one. You are, have a hidden power. Is there anyone that's read the book? You don't have to have read the book. I. Yeah, Sunday. I actually what read the book. Say what again. Book? Say again. I started Scapping also, up. but I, I wanted to, uh, to listen to you first because I think I... I understand more after you doing this session, so I will wait, and yeah. and then I will uh, hear it again. Mm -hmm. I understand more after the session, but it's like it makes it better just when I read it, and then Inka gives me new appreciation, and then I can read it again, and like it's wonderful. Yeah. Yes, you can explain me what, what I read. So I, to, I, I wanted to do it uh, in in another way this time to understand it more. <laughs> but Sandy is amazing. Like she's like, yeah, I love it even more. Inka explains it, and then I know what to do. <laughs> Sandy so have the, the time to do it twice. I don't know how, but I, I can't do it twice. I need the the other book so I can do it one oh. time. So I am better there because I don't even know what book There is doing. a lot of homework. <laughs> we have the mirror, we have uh, Joe, we have like, we have school. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is school. Better than school. Better than school <laughs> because all the books are amazing. But this type of school work is free to do, as in you don't get punished if you don't do it. Oh, oh. Well. <laughs> Oh. Well, I, I, hang on a minute. We do, when, especially in the Joe in the Joe group. Oh yes, in the Joe group. That's, <laughs> that's the only group. Yeah, you get you get, get removed. <laughs> get yeah. <laughs> that's when the strict teacher was, comes out. I was the witness of it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> done it. Go. Was, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. It was so yes. nice. <laughs> Go and do the homework, Gabriella. <laughs> <laughs> you know what but I felt so valid actually like this is so valid actually I haven't done it so I can't even get upset about it <laughs> looking forward to waking up with you tomorrow the next day and the day after definitely mm -hmm. all this oh. 
So I actually read, I actually did this book on, when the first started the book club. I think it was about the fourth book I did, fourth or fifth book. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> and then I, re and I read it this time and I was like, what did I dislike about it? She does everything that I do and all these techniques and tools. I was like, I want to create so many sessions from this book. So I don't know, maybe I wasn't ready for it back then. Oh. Mm. Well, right, because you're so much more enlightened and awakened and mm -hmm. your growth has been so exponential, really, uh, Yinka. So it's the same thing. I was like that with Eckhart Tolle's book, Back Whenever. And, uh, I mean, now I can't get enough of the guy. You know, he's yeah. phenomenal. I didn't you've like it. You've got to be ready for the lessons. You've got to be lesson ready for the information. And it's being open to it so I completely resonate and understand with what you say you know um it's just you haven't quite yeah so the question mm -hmm. and uh, I am uh, I'm very amazed in my mind actually with this uh, you're reading all these books and um it sounds I mean, how you're making it like a, some of you guys are um in different groups right so let's say you do jaws you do this how do you make yourself to have these all alignments with those books and not get uh confused for me um i set my intention of what my, my intention for me so like this like my my recent intention is to address the guilt that i feel within so mm -hmm. every session addresses that so regardless of what it it the, it's about I'm addressing a piece of my own internal thing. So, yeah, that's what helps me go through all these books. I go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. I yeah. think that's a, that's a great way of doing the intentions. What do you mm -hmm. want to get out of it? Yeah. So if it was no, it, on, um, I, want, I want a new house, then every session would be internally addressing those parts of me clearing out whether it was doing Michael Rice and I'd be clearing out my belief systems around having a new house. If it was doing Joe, I'd be doing the manifestation of it in that new house. So that's how I go about it to make it like I'm not, then I'm not, oh my God, I've got all this and I've got that and I've got this and I get lost in it all. Yeah. And I think now you, you now actually gave a clarity to me because I was like a little bit, oh my God, it's like where to go. And yeah, you get like a, uh, Lost, but if I put the intention, then that's gonna make actually sense. Mm -hmm. Can I I I... Sorry, sorry, Gabriella, didn't mean to interrupt. No, can it's we all set an intention. Say that again. Can we all set an intention? Yeah, can all set an intention. Because that's no, a great question. The end of the day. Yeah, because that's a great idea, because I have found it's particularly difficult with um, all the different books. You know, sometimes you go a bit this way and then a bit that way. And, and I and yeah, and when you said that, I just thought, what a great idea. Then they all align. Yeah. So what's your yeah. intentions, everybody? Is there one area of your life that you think that, yeah, that really needs some work on? Oh, there is too many areas in my life that needs to work on. One that you feel drawn to, like you can sense like that's the there might be the one that's most difficult. Like, yeah, I'm ready to do address that one. <sighs> one that may often play up in your life. For me, the reason why I did that chose guilt last week was I realized guilt is the vibration that I've been literally sending out. It was the it's a, what the part of me that um, and it, and even though there's lots of other areas, I realised that is the pinnacle point of if I address that, it, the everything else above it will start to clear, because that's the piece that if I could just clear it out and start instead of trying to get to the surface level stuff. But do or choose something for you if you, you've never not done intention before in all the areas. Just choose one that you think that'll be the softer one, the one that'll be gentle for me to choose that yeah I can go in with that one hmm. no brilliant no. appreciate this so much thank you we can still think about it yeah and then basically really tap into that like what is that area because there is areas yeah. so in the plural uh 
that need, but there is definitely a one which is which stand out of all of it. Yeah. And then, or then you might want to choose one that you think actually, if I choose that one, that's going to change all the that's that's going to have a like a trickle effect in all the other areas. Whichever one you choose, anyway, is going to have a trickle effect. I think it's like amazing that sometimes you don't see that, like you you said inca guilt or like uh, and for me it's like love and once you tap into that it's all kind of resonates outside and uh, influences all the other ones yeah yeah no but oh my god i'm so thankful for this question that popped to my mind oh my god thanks yeah yeah mm -hmm. Like yeah so hopefully you want to write an intention so then whatever you're going to take through for the rest of the week at any sessions you do this is the intention i'm going to work on it's funny you know um i've written because we were talking yesterday about the i want i get uh so i'm saying okay my, I, i'm ready to receive that's my intention and then when you just said about guilt I, I wrote that down too. So I'm ready to release guilt. And I feel I feel really scared now. That mm -hmm. word guilt is making me feel really scared, almost a little bit sick. The receive I was all right with. Um, is that possibly because guilt is more important? Um, more... Because guilt is a punishment. There's also a punishment that comes with guilt. So if I address guilt, well, that, there's for me, there's a feeling of, will I get punished? <laughs> you know, that fear well, like, that... of i'm feeling too is i'm feeling scared and, and a bit sick and i was thinking no i don't want to i don't want to release guilt it's too hard <laughs> well, guilt is the, the thing guilt is the gift that keeps on giving and what it oh, keeps it on does. giving it is of itself guilt can only give off itself so if you go with guilt if the, the energy the energy of guilt can only recreate guilt so whatever you do it's hard to notice that if it is guilt that you will then feel guilty after the thing that you do, regardless of what it is you do, because it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. So if I do something good, I feel guilty. If I do something bad, I feel guilty. It's the the energy of it is always feeling guilt. Should but we have a session on guilt, on releasing guilt? Yeah, when I get more better with my own. In a, in a, in a <laughs> <laughs> That's like a dog job. Yeah. <laughs> I heard something uh, very recently uh, from Gabor, or oh, this Hungarian guy. Mate, uh, Mate. Yeah. he's Hungarian American. Yeah, he said something very beautiful. Uh, when we are releasing all the negative feelings uh, from our body, which is attached to our body so badly that we do not know what is beyond and actually below, and he said mostly below, so we are afraid of giving that up because we have no, that unknown it was like all oh, coming oh my god Joe Dispenser is there everybody is there anyway so you're coming to that unknown uh, places and you're releasing removing revealing but what is underneath of that is a hole which drops to the lot and once you drop to the lot you're opening okay. and I was like, oh my god nice. so do not be afraid to release all of it and remove it and work on it because that hole where it's leading you is so long and it's so unconditional. Oh my God, I'm getting good. Uh, so yeah, so I can't wait to drop to it. So mm -hmm. and all of us, meet you there, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I was, doing, I was doing this uh, session on uh, a subconscious and, you know, they were saying also the same thing that uh, you have all these thoughts in your head but once you, like, pare them down once you you know you actually arrive in love all people you know when they do bad things to you it's because they don't feel loved they actually need of love yeah. mm -hmm. and once you understand you can really actually put yourself away of it like don't take it personally and i think because sometimes like people hurt but it's because they are hurting and really having that in that mind in that like remembering that it's not about you, it's about them mm -hmm. and it's their things and it's it's really like how many things actually I learned from here and uh, and not only from this girl but all of you guys it's just amazing it's really and it start to sit it start to make sense like all of it it's like right okay this is really makes sense really oh, 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 okay okay <laughs>
So chapter one, the reason so many people feel unhappy, unsuccessful, unsafe, is they forget that the true happiness, success and safety was, they forget where the true happiness, success and safety lie. Remembering where your true power lies, reunites you with the universe so that you can truly enjoy the miracles of life. And most important, so your happiness can be an expression of joy that elevates, elevates the world. Joy, joy is our birthright. What blocks our joy, our separation from love, the way back to love begins with understanding how we disconnected in the first place. We all disconnect in our own unique ways. In some ways or another, we deny the love of the universe and choose the fear of the world. We choose to hook into fears of, on the news, the fears in our classrooms, the fears in our household. We separate from the love of the universe by giving purpose to pain and thinking power comes from outside sources. We deny the power of love and we save our faith for fear. We forget love altogether. Does that definitely resonates with what Gabriella was just saying. Yeah. So we've just got a short video. Gabriella Bernstein. It's like when everybody says Gabriella is like, okay. Yeah. And her story is amazing, by the way. Her story is so amazing. Mm -hmm. She's actually got a book, Judgment, Judgment Day, is that something? Ah. She's got quite a bit on guilt in there as well. Might have pulled I that used out. to be hooked up on her because of her story like it's very empowering like, what she was going through and where she was and who she become and she decided like one day like that's it i'm ending with this obviously it wasn't that easy but believing that that she was a i think she was a drug addict and all this and then she ended and look at her today yeah she's a oh my god she is a oh, oh, oh. so this is an example like you all of you this is like inspirational example where you could be if you really, 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 really want to. Mm -hmm. Let's watch. So whenever we recognize and witness that we're stuck in a fear-based story or we are replaying or repurposing a fear-based story and recycling that story and engaging our friends in that story and putting that story out into the world or overthinking that story, that is a sure sign that we are relying on our own strength. That is a sure sign that we have disconnected from the presence of our power. That is a sure sign that we have disconnected from the connection that we have to a spirit or an entity beyond our physical sight. And so the first step to come back home is through prayer. A Course in Miracles teaches that prayer is the medium of miracles. So remember that moment when I sat down with my husband at our gluten-free dinner and I said, I pray for creative solutions. And everything reorganized once I opened the door with prayer. So when you witness that you are in the presence of fear and that you are relying on your own strength, you can open up to a strength far greater than yours with very simple words. Thank you for showing me creative solutions beyond my physical sight. Show me what you got. Simple words, simple prayers. A, a prayer like I surrender. That's enough to open that invisible door. But through the experience of prayer, we surrender what we think we know. Now, this is the next step. The secret to prayer is to forget what you think you need. The secret to that prayer in my home with my husband was that I let go of what I thought we needed. The apartment in New York City that was going to have a good school system that we were going to move into immediately and dwell in for the decades to come. The moment I let that go, I allowed what the universe had in store for me. I allowed something far better, far greater, far grander, far more appropriate for where we are in our lives today. And far less expensive, let me tell you. <laughs> and so, you know, opening up to creative solutions, opening up to those creative solutions through surrender, through prayer, and recognizing that when we're praying for what we think we need, we are blocking our intuitive power.
So create a prayer. What chapter one starts with is create a prayer. So you can take, um, you can put your own name. She put Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. So you could put universe, creator, or whatever you want to put in that little um, that area there that you resonate with. So make me an instrument of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring spirit of forgiveness, that where there is discord, I may bring harmony, that where there is error, I may bring truth, that where there is doubt, I may bring faith, that where there is despair, I may bring hope, that where there are shadows, I may bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Universe, Lord, I self grant that I may seek rather than to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to external life. So you may want to spend a few minutes of just playing around with the prayer. As I was just mentioned before about setting an intention, I did actually play around with the prayer and put in everywhere it had a word, like that where there is wrong, I put guilt. So that where there is guilt, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is guilt, I may bring harmony. So you can play around and make create your own prayer within this prayer or create one that you can sense and feel. You may want to keep the words or just play around a little bit with them and put your own word within it. But I'm just going to play a bit of music for a few minutes so you can create your own and just read it or say it out to yourself.
Course in Miracles teaches the presence of fear is a sure sign you are trusting in your own strength. This is a profound message. Separating from love means that you deny the presence of a higher power, the presence of the universe, and learn to rely on your own power to be feel safe. The moment you choose to disconnect from loving presence of the universe, you lose sight of the safety, security, and clear guidance that is otherwise available to you. The moment you realign with love and stop relying on your own strength, clear direction will be presented. The presence of love will always cast out fear. Universe lesson. When we surrender our will to the power of the universe, we receive miracles. Another way to surrender to the power of the universe is to get clear about how the stories and beliefs we carry dictate our experiences. Of course, a miracle teaches us that projection is perception. This means that whatever stories you're projecting in your mind are what you're perceiving in your life. So a metaphor, imagine you're in a theatre watching a scary movie. You're at the po that point in the movie when something really bad is about to happen. You know that if the leading character turns the corner, she will walk into a life-threatening situation. You're throwing popcorn at the screen and screaming, don't do it, don't turn the corner. Gary in the book suggests that we think of this as the way we live our own lives. We're watching the movie screen that is our life and we're screaming, don't go back to that relationship. Don't take that awful job. Don't pick up that drink. But time and time again, we get stuck in the same horror screen. Energy flows where your attention goes. If your focus and attention have been in negative, that will cut off the possibility for love. Then the moment you say your prayer, you open up your consciousness to receive new information. This can be our way out of the fearful projection. The good news is that the way out of our fear projection is simple. The movie theatre metaphor suggests that we consider what would happen if we just walked back into the projection room and changed the reel. What would happen if we changed our projection? What would we perceive? Sarah, you've got a really good example of that, of doing that with your beads, isn't it? It's like you're going in and changing the, the, the reel of that, of the projection of what you were told. So what would happen if we changed our projection? What would we perceive? Instead of trying to change the movie of what outside and throw your popcorn on it and shout at it, don't go. If you went into the projection room and changed the reel instead. So the universe lesson, you see the world that you have made, but you do not see yourself as the the image maker. So a question for you all. There are a few steps you can take to remembering your hidden power. Step one, what is the fearful movie you've been playing? Using movie metaphors, take a moment to contemplate the idea that you are the director of the movie that is your life. 
think about the movie you're you've been projecting onto your own life and contemplate the fo the following what fear-based stories from the past or projection about the future are you playing on your internal movie screen how are these stories blocking you from feeling supported and happy so for sarah how's um that what you were told that you've believed and you've lived by how how's that played out for you in your movie do you want me to answer that now yeah if you if you're open to answering it okay um well yes because i make all these lists of what i want but um i never get them um because i'm blocking it the whole time i want doesn't get but you know um so um uh, it's uh, I feel quite excited to think well, what will happen if that's removed um, and it just all flows in you know that you've got other phrases like well if you want it badly enough you'll do it and then that is failure so there's these conflicting phrases uh, uh, and 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 I think well I do want it all enough but um, yeah so uh, now I'm ready to receive yeah yeah it's very conflicting Aren't they like I want doesn't get to uh, you've got to want it enough, but then the the conflict inside is saying, well, if I want it, then I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. It's like a spell, isn't it? It's like yeah. when someone puts a spell on you, and however much you want something, um, you've allowed that blockage to block it. And they've got some lovely images from today, like the channel that Gabrielle was talking about blocking the way to love and whatever yeah I've got some yeah I, I, I don't know why I, I stopped coming to to um, let life overtake me and I stopped coming to 5am what an amazing first lesson back thank you and sometimes we need time away as well that time away then allows us to want to be more open when we do come back yeah So recognizing how these stories have been projected, a projection about the future that you're playing out these external in, internal movie screens, how these stories block you from feeling supported and happy. I was actually thanking you uh, energetically last week, uh, Yinka, for you taking a break because that then it almost allowed me to actually have mm -hmm. a break because I'm so, for me, every single day is a classroom day. And I mean, every single day, it's, it's what, what am I learning? What am I going, but every single day is a classroom day. So when you took a break, it, I felt, oh, I'm allowed a break now. I can have yeah. a break because you don't realize that it's that integration time is so important. Yes. Yes. There is actually a thing like a, when people are going on a holiday, we need holidays so much. And it's really like when you are in that position, you're always learning. You can't absorb, you are still a sponge. And uh, there is always certainty. You've got to go to that position. Okay, I need to now relax. I need to actually let it go. And then it goes in the brain because then it's otherwise it's a lot. So you can thank you for taking breaks. So step two, what's the positive movie you've been playing? Because we all have a positive movie playing as well. So we're not just looking at the negative. The same way the fearful stories block you from the flow of the universe, your positive stories empower your life. Let's look closely at the powerful stories you're replaying on your internal projector. Note, you may be stuck in a lot of fear right now and may have trouble finding an empowering story. Just keep it simple. An empowering story can be, I feel happy and connected. And when I'm when I'm cooking or I'm in flow with the universe when, when I'm on a long run. What are the love-based empowering stories that you replay in your head? How did these stories make you feel supported and happy?
So just take a few moments just to jot that down. So this exercise will help you understand how the positive projections you believe in are supporting your connection to the universe and how your negative projections are keeping you stuck. A big goal throughout this book is to bring more energy to the positive stories and use the practices to help you heal the negative ones. Universal lesson, look for love in all the right places. So take a moment to answer these questions. What does it feel like when I'm connected to the presence of my power? What does it feel like when I'm disconnected from my power? Become very aware of what it feels like to be aligned with your power versus what it feels like to be disconnected. This awareness is the most crucial step to connecting with your hidden power. So I'm going to play some music because I want you to take a bit of time to think about that. What does it feel like when I'm connected and what does it feel like when you're disconnected?
So the way back to your power is simple. Whenever you notice yourself disconnect from the presence of love, simply say this prayer to your to come back to peace. I witness that I am out of alignment with my power. I choose to see peace instead of this. This prayer will reconnect you to your desire to be in union with your creative power. Your desire is enough to help you begin to reconnect. Make the conscious commitment to realign with the power and you will begin to feel the shift set in. So I witness that I am out of alignment with my power. I choose to see peace instead of this. Take a moment just to breathe that. Universe lesson, your presence is your power. The simplest shift can reconnect you in an instant. As you get into the practice of mindfully making these shifts, you'll be you'll in turn begin to experience love, flow, synchronicity, and a tremendous amount of guidance. Take these universal lessons seriously and your high fives energy will clear the path for a life beyond your wildest dreams. Meditation and prayer open you up to the power of the universe. The presence of fear shows up when you're not relying on the, the universe. Your projection is your perception. Become aware of the fear-based stories you've been projecting on your internal movie screen. Your presence is your power. Be mindful of how your thoughts, words and energy disconnect you from the universe. And know the difference between what it feels like to be connected to the presence of your power versus what it feels like when you're not. When you notice you're disconnected from the presence of love, say the prayer to come back to your peace. I witness that I'm out of alignment with my power. I choose to see peace instead of this. I'm going to just finish on a, I think this is a meditation. Let me just check. Yes, it is. Even mute. So, thank you everyone for joining. It's been a great session. Thank you, Yinka. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank everybody. You, thank you very much. Yinka, is it thank possible you. to put the sorry, these little um clips on the um whatsapp group just the little meditations that you've just put through oh this one this one and the previous one too yeah i'll do that i'll put it in the you in the 5 a.m club isn't it what's i'm up? in all your clubs all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you awesome thank you Inga. it was an amazing session i really enjoyed it thank you yeah i missed you bad Inga. yeah I feel like I've not even been away. <laughs> I still was getting up at 5 a.m. Uh, the space for all use. It's it is I am away. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everyone. I shall see you tomorrow. When we have these moments of pause and connection inward, the outward soothing becomes less and less. And we start to just start to change our patterns. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for spiritual seekers. Welcome back to Dear Gabby. I am in the studio. 
I am feeling super grounded and I have been doing some vocal lessons for myself because I've been really listening to my voice and just kind of terrified of all the wear and tear. And I was practicing not speaking last night when I was hanging out with my makeup artist, we were having dinner, Alex, you've heard about her. I'm having dinner with Alex and I'm like, I can't talk. And she's just sitting there like silent. And I'm like, you can talk to me, but I couldn't respond. And I realized how much I talk. My poor vocal cords have had abuse. I have been abusing them. So I just have to figure out one, how to talk less in my life. But in the meanwhile, here I am and I'm learning Spanish. And so anytime I enter any situation where I can speak Espanol con mi amigos, I am speaking all day long. Hey, Wolf, habla Espanol? Poquito, pero yo, yeah, no necesito, hablamos contigo. Okay, I pretend I know Spanish, but I like to talk and people will be like, well, why do you want to learn Spanish? And I'm like, because I like to talk. <laughs> So here I am and I'm kind of like looking at my life and seeing the years ahead of me as being a motivational speaker and a podcaster. I think I have to talk less in my real life, which is kind of a strange, sad thing, but it's also a really beautiful thing because it's giving me this opportunity to almost be a more, more of a viewer than a preacher in everyday moments and to be able to take more in and to kind of experience and practice just being a little bit more silent, being a little bit more of a listener. So I'm just excited to sort of adjust my energy a little bit. That's just a little random riff on what's happening with me. <laughs> and I thought it might be interesting to just let you guys in on my desire to stop talking as I start a podcast where I'm going to talk for the next half hour. This is my time that I want to be talking. I want to be talking to you. I don't necessarily need to waste my voice on the streets or in the cars or wherever I am in the world, I can just keep it here and really protect it and listen more. And so think about those areas in your life where you might be unconsciously in a setting where you're maybe more outspoken or you're one of those people that just sits back and doesn't say much and see what it might be like to exercise the opposite. See what it might be like to be the person in the meeting that speaks up more when you're someone who stays silent. Maybe see what it's like to be the person who's just listening and really taking it in and not constantly trying to fill the empty space. It's a big deal. Try it out. It's really scary. <laughs> All right. So today is not about my vocal cords. It's not about how we tune down the volume or raise it. It's about you. It's about giving you an opportunity to be seen, to be heard, and to lead this show today. So we're going to do a Gabby AMA, a real hardcore Dear Gabby AMA. I want to hear what you have for me. I want to respond to you. I want to give you concrete tools. And I want it to be like a private coaching session, although thousands of people will listen. But listen, you're brave. You're courageous. You come here for this. I want to hear you. I want to really check in directly with you. And if you love this episode and you love this kind of conversation, and you like hearing me workshop people and coach people, then definitely go download my Gabby coaching app, get a free seven day trial. And you can just go to deargabby.com forward slash app and get as endless amounts of coaching from me. New weekly coaching, over a hundred meditations, workshops, you're just going to get all of Gabby right there. So if you're loving this and you want more and you want me to be your coach, not just the coach to the people on the show, then go to deargabby.com forward slash all right, Wolf, who do we have? Nicole is on the back end. Wolf is in the studio. Nicole, who would you like to bring up? Wolf is going to bring them on the screen so I can see them. Let's bring it in, people. Hi, how are you? Beautiful. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. You've got some fireworks behind you. I do. I think this is from my 4th of July. I haven't been on since on Zoom since the 4th of July, but... That's well, if you haven't been on Zoom since the 4th of July, you are my hero. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, you're I spend way too much time on Zoom. <laughs> right? <laughs> Notice how like you're struggling with the voice currently. So yeah, there's a lot of transitions happening in my life right now. I'm actually due with my second child on July 20th. 
and um, there's just a lot going on in our lives. We bought a new house and have moved into it. And um, there's just a lot of wounds showing up for me financially um, because I'm not able to work currently and I won't be able to work for a little bit. I'm looking for like freelance jobs and things of that nature. But I struggle because I have deep, deep financial wounds that have been generational with my family. My family is not very good with money. And I want to know if there's any suggestions on how to heal those. I've done a lot of root chakra healing, but still I just feel totally blocked off from money and finances in general. And just seem like a novice at it every single time something comes up. So, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. And I'm sure you're not alone in this experience. And congratulations on the baby. Thank you. And it's also when we are birthing, it's a time when our familial historical wounds come to the surface. So you can say, hello, money wound. Here you are again. Thank you for revealing yourself to me and helping me shine the crystal. Let's start there, okay? And your parents and your family's wounds don't have to be yours. So some of this is about recognizing and owning that you don't have to hold the trauma of their past. So sometimes we take on that burden of our family members and we take on the burden of our history, but we can actually have a quantum shift around that. We can look at those stories and choose for them not to be ours. I can only I can say that to you with a lot of conviction because I've been there. I too grew up with a family story that was very rooted in fear of financial insecurity. And I carried that for many years. But when I was in my early 20s, I had a therapist that said something that changed my life. She said, your family struggles don't have to be yours. And for whatever reason, on that day, I heard that. And I just was so proud to say, oh, yeah, that's serious. I'm going to take that in. And so I'm going to say the same thing to you right now. Your family struggles don't have to be yours. So I'm not asking you to try to erase decades of historical wounds or trauma or belief systems that are really ingrained in you, but I am asking you to recognize the choice that you have. You have choice to carry on the legacy of financial insecurity or to choose to stop it. You've already made the choice because you're asking about it. You said you were working on your root chakra. You know, you're trying, you're open, you're, you're ready, you're willing. You're not so rooted in it. And that willingness is enough to get the ball rolling. But I want to ask you, sweetheart, what is that part of you that's in such financial insecurity? What is it repeating? What's the story that it has on repeat? It's just really unworthiness that it's not available to me, that I, um, that if I do get some sort of compensation and um, in, uh, I don't deserve to enjoy it, there's scarcity constantly, but it ch changes from scarcity to fear yeah. um, that I don't know what I'm doing with it, that I'm not worthy of it, that it's going to come in just as fast as it like goes out, that I have to spend, 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 or else I'm not producing or there's there's just so much there. And you can see so clearly how that reflects the storyline of your family. Yeah. So I want you to do this little assignment. I want you to step away after this recording. And I want you to write out the story. All the things that you just said to me, I have to spend to produce. I'm always in lack. Write it out. Put it on the page. And then I want you to write back to it as your adult, resourced, calm self, who's with me right now, as the way that you would speak to your child, the way that you would speak to a friend. And I want you to just respond. 
see if you can access any qualities of compassion or curiosity and just write with that part of you. And you might find yourself writing, you know, I hate this part of me. I wish it would go away. That's okay. Just keep writing and writing and writing until you truly feel any kind of relief, even if it's just a cathartic relief or it's a sense of compassion or clarity inside. And then I want you to notice, you have to write this down. I want you to notice if you see any C qualities of self, we've talked about this on the show. Self is our undamaged, resourced, adult self. And self is courageous, calm, connected, confident, committed, it's clear, it's I said courageous, compassionate. And I'll, I'll, I'll put out the eight C qualities in the show notes of this show. And I want you to just notice, is there any, mo no, do I notice any clarity? Do I notice any creativity? Do I notice any, my, is my heart open at all? But this would be after, you know, writing out the whole negative story, not even a negative story, just the, the wounded story of this part of you that's young and holding on to the burden of your past and your family and the stories. And just get it out. Just put it on the page. Don't judge it. Just get it out. And then once you feel like it's out, just slowly start to notice how you feel towards it and write back to it in response. And like I said, even if your response right away is, F you, I hate you. I don't want you in my life anymore. That's okay. Just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. Because just getting out what that part of you needs to say and then responding to it with whatever part of you is in response clears space for you to just start to address what's happening on the inside rather than trying to control it. So much of your days, I imagine, are spent trying to push down or heal your root chakra or you know, do something to shun this part of you. And sweetheart, that part of you that has financial insecurity is a very young part of you and it needs to have a voice and it needs the gift of being seen and it needs space to be heard. And even if your response to it isn't beautiful right away, that's just another part of you defending against it. And that's okay. It's just get into dialogue with all these different emotions that have to be heard and have to be seen and give yourself permission to stop shunning them and start honoring them. How does that feel for you? That is something that I can I can definitely do. It's it's just it's it's so scary because it's such a zone where I don't feel I have never felt safe in. So does it feel scary to even let it out? It does because like there's an admittance there. You know, an admittance that um I'm in similar situations that my family members, my parents are in and like let me tell you something that might clear that for you. We all are or have been in situations that we learned from our family. So recognizing that connection, every single person listening right now has some family burden that they have in some way carried on that has really helped them weave the tapestry of their life and those of us who show up for it, those of us who listen to shows like Dear Gabby, read books like mine or other self-help books or go to therapy, do spiritual practice, we have the gift of helping to unblend from those parts of us and those parts of our family. But right here, right now, let that part of you know that, sweetheart, you're not alone. Everyone's carrying on the burdens of their family's past. Even back, 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 back. You know, there's studies around epigenetics and uh, family members that have been deceased years and years and years ago from Holocaust or, or uh, slavery and how much that's affected the genes of those individuals and the trauma burden that we carry from our ancestors. No, you're not alone in carrying that burden. And sometimes if we just become a little bit casual with it, like, oh, like you're here, of course you're here. 
my baby's coming in. I've got a lot going on. Of course, of course I would have this big shit come up. Okay, let's have a conversation. Maybe it's, it's possible. And if it feels too scary, babes, don't do it now. Wait till my next book comes out <laughs> and I will guide you further. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And in the meantime, you know, when we're dealing with these old historical wounds, just be gentle with yourself. And really, even if you just get into that casual dialogue with the part of you and you're like, oh, yeah, of course you're here. I get it. This is a big time. Of course, this would be coming up. It's such a gentler way to perceive yourself. I got it. Thank you. Enjoy that baby. Thank you. Thank you. Give Nicole your information because I want to send you my birthing affirmations. And if anyone's listening and they're a member of the Gabby coaching app, the birthing affirmations are inside there in the meditation section. So thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. I see you're very emotional. I'm really happy to see that. Go journal now if you feel called. She's got it up, ready to go. Good luck with that baby. Bye, sweetie. If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.